executions begin at birth, and if no one interrupts us, our purpose is carried out to the end of our lives. Along the way, our attention is split across several threads of execution, if you will. Events begin small, happy and sad, all rejoin the main course of our lives, each bringing back lessons learned to propel us forward. Today, this conference is one such event, and a happy one like that for me. I get to see old friends and make new ones. I get to be with my tribe. Of all the places we could each be today, we have chosen to be here, ready to share experiences and expertise with each other. If your interest aligns with mine, you're likely excited about Matt and Francesc's CSI Go For Talk. Maybe you're feeling a bit nostalgic and you're looking forward to Daniela's Pac-Man from scratch. If you'd like to take risks, James's introduction to Reflect and Unsafe is right up your alley. Whatever brought you here, or whatever gets you excited, we as a community share a common affection for the Go language. But if I may impart my first lesson from a couple of decades of experiences of my own, when we return to the grind tomorrow or in the days to come, love for a piece of technology will not be enough. It never is for me. This was a harder than usual talk for me to bring together. It forced me to bring forth emotions that I must suppress day to day in order to do my work as a professional. You see, I currently work in a domain that brings me closer than most of my industry peers to the reality of some harsh inequities in our education system. Two months from now, <coughs> thousands of students will graduate pub public middle schools across the US. And for every 100 African American students, 87 of them will be underprepared to tackle high school math. 87%. And if you go looking, it won't take you long to find more unfortunate statistics like this one. There are many reasons for this, but clear among them are the socioeconomic inequities that lead to underserved communities having undertrained and undersupported teachers and school leaders. <coughs> Put another way, if you live in a poor neighborhood, you likely get a poor education. If you're in that 87%, your prospects aren't good. It doesn't take much imagination to see how a cascade of educational failures throughout your formative years could open you up to a life of poverty, crime, or premature death. This is something that perpetuates this vicious cycle. The life experiences that come with the color of my skin make these possible outcomes more real than imaginary. I care about that 87%, and without meandering too much on the details of how, the work I do as an engineer for the organization I do it for is aimed at having a positive impact in the lives of the students in underserved communities through the use of software. Which brings me to my first takeaway. Find your why and let technology be your how. There is no feel-good diversity and inclusion tagline associated with this work. It doesn't trend on Twitter. It's not popular. Yes, friends, there's an entire class of problems being solved with our favorite programming language that has nothing to do with trendy startups or popular open source projects. While I jest, in a way, this speaks volumes about Go's adoption. It is spreading, and that puts you and I in a position of privilege. I promised you a story. Several months ago, my team was to deliver some new enhancements to an existing Go-based microservices platform. Those enhancements included integrating several third-party APIs to support the organization's efforts. <coughs> Once a few members of the team got comfortable with Go, everyone was felt pretty good about how productive they were, 
And uh, this allowed us to build highly concurrent programs to true through all workloads. You see, our domain is such that our usage patterns are predictable. Schools are usually in session Monday through Friday, and for a certain portion of the day. You can actually see this play out in our chart. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That big gap is in the weekend, and it repeats again. When the time came to deliver, we scheduled our deploy for an opportune time. For us, that was usually late Saturday or early Sunday. So during the weekend, we proceed with the deploy and perform a few smoke tests, and things look good. Then Monday comes. At this time, if you're wondering what happened to this chart, whether it got cut off, no. That's where Monday was supposed to begin. And you guess what happened? Complete outage of a mission-critical system, which led to hundreds of students, teachers, and school administrators being unable to use our organization's software as they had intended. Now, if you've done this for 20 years, you get to be part of a few rodeos. And this wasn't my first one. But the people on the other end of that outage, the already underserved students, the frustrated teachers, the administrators calling us to beg that we restore the system as quickly as possible because of the sheer cost associated with coordinating their staff and students to use our software. All of that immediately hit us as the team responsible. The six were high and real. And so the team huddles together to divide and conquer. Each team member looks for signs of failure in the parts of the system they know well. In those stressful moments, your concern revolves, revolves solely around figuring out what's going on as quickly as possible. You're looking at logs, and armed with a hint of where the problem might be, you're reading code as fast as possible. And this is where Go's greatest quality, in my opinion, comes in, is readability. You come across some Go routines being created to query a third-party API. On a hunch, you instrument those calls to emit a trace, and sure enough, most of the calls are failing due to rate limiting by the third-party services. This was a design flaw, one that did not account for all the constraints, including those enforced by third parties. The team does the right thing and adds some exponential back off and limits the number of Go routines that can interact with that API at any given time. And boom, we're back in business. Though this was a harrowing experience, you know what I remember most about it? It was a postmortem. The team gathered the morning after the fix had gone out, and you could see the exhaustion in everybody's faces. Our team had taken a beating from the stress, from the customers that we had let, out, we had let down, from the business for potentially jeopardizing relationships, <coughs> but most importantly from ourselves. We knew better, we could do better. Still, our postmortem was blameless. We examined what went wrong, set up new processes to prevent a recurrence, and reconnected without why. Why we were doing this in the first place. That this work was important. That one bump in the road wasn't gonna stop us. That's the power of a why. Which brings me to my second lesson. Find your scene and surround yourself with those with a similar purpose. Not interest, purpose. Interest fades, purpose endures. It is estimated that the average person will spend a third of their lives working. If you're lucky or privileged, you get to choose where and with whom you spend some of that time. The 2018 Go survey indicates that there are more companies across the globe using Go than last year. It's growing. Some salary surveys now suggest that we are the highest paid developers on the planet. These things translate into more opportunity for you to find a different scene if the one you're in now doesn't support your why. Just don't 
blame me for quitting your job if it doesn't work, OK? <laughs> I open with the recognition that all of you here today and those out in the greater Go community were my tribe. I like that word, tribe. My favorite definition, <laughs> my favorite definition of that word is from the Urban Dictionary. It is a group of friends that becomes your family. The people that will be there for you no matter what and who you've, you're guaranteed to have a good time with. Although people may not understand how close they are in their relationships with each other, it doesn't matter because they all understand it and love each other. Thanks, wait for it, 0707. I couldn't agree more. So my fellow, my fellow gophers, near and far, you are my tribe. My experiences with you over the last four or five years have been nothing short of amazing as we've grown closer together. I hope you care for me as much as I care for you because I need you to come through for me on something. Right now, I need you to look around at your neighbors. I'm serious, look around. Look to the left, to the right, look in front of you. Don't be shy. Can you see it? Or rather, can you see what's missing? There are not many people who look like me in the crowd, male, female, or otherwise. We're working on it, but we can do better still. By all accounts, we are a welcoming bunch, and I love that about us. But sometimes we can't wait for change to come to us. We have to be the catalyst for it. Here's a very specific way you can help. Organize, teach, or TA a GoBridge workshop. By doing so, you'll not only be exposing a number of underrepresented folks to Go, and in many cases, to programming in general, you'll also reinforce our ethos of inclusion and send a strong message that this here community is safe for everybody. I'll close by saying that this journey with you so far is one that I'm proud to be part of. Remember, it's not just about go for the sake of go. Find your why and let go be your how. Find your scene because life's too short for anything less. Support your tribe and it will support you. Enjoy this year's Gotham Go. Thank you. <laughs>